In July 2019, AMD released the X570 chipset with much fanfare alongside the much-anticipated Ryzen 3000 series of processors powered by the Zen 2 architecture. One year on, with the Ryzen 5000 series of processors set to launch in just a couple of days, let's have a look at the high-end AM4 motherboard that you might choose to pair with a Ryzen 5000 processor, the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. Going for about 535 Singapore dollars, or about 350 US dollars for you overseas folks as of October 2020, let's have a look at what features it packs in the next couple of minutes. Before that, special shout out here to my friends over at Mansa Computers, without whom this video would not have been possible. If you're in Singapore and on the lookout for a custom built PC, look no further than the custom built PC solutions that they have on offer. Check out their website in the video description down below. Okay, so the board that I have with me here is in the Revision 1.2 guise, as you can see from the label on the box here. So we have X570 Aorus Master Revision 1.2, which makes it the latest revision uh, from Gigabyte, if I'm not mistaken. The X570 Aorus Master was released about in July 2019 as well, alongside the ASRock X570M Pro 4, which may make it seem a little bit long in the tooth now, because it's about a year old in terms of you know, the world of computer hardware, but Gigabyte made sure to pack a whole load of features into the board to make it extremely relevant even by today's standard, where today is October 2020. Initial impressions, I must say that you know the board. Is, I mean, the box is pretty nicely done up, and it packs quite a bit of heft. By the way, I suspect it's because the motherboard itself is pretty heavy. We'll get to that shortly as we take a stab at the contents inside. But let's have a look at the back for its feature set. Now, a quick recap: the X570 chipset is currently the top of the line for the AM4 platform and offers PCIe 4.0 support right out of the box. With the X570 Aorus Master, you get a pretty good VRM solution which probably gives you quite a bit of headroom for your overclocking needs. And uh, it also does come with dual Ethernet ports, one of which supporting the latest 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet standard, as well as built-in Intel Wi-Fi 6 supporting the latest AX wireless standard. Pretty exciting stuff. So with that, let's get started with the unboxing proper. So here we have it, the X570 Aorus Master. Gigabyte's clearly put a lot of thought into the packaging. This is some serious foam padding that's going on with the board, as you can see. And well, let's get it out of the way in the meantime. Goodness, it's actually pretty heavy. Well, we'll have a closer look at the board later. But in the meantime, let's take a peek at the insides of the box. What do we have here? Okay, this looks like a sheet of stickers, Aorus Passport. Well, it's probably something that you can use to jazz up your computer with. I mean, this is after all a gaming motherboard. We've even got like cable labels here. Well, I guess it's a pretty nice touch, although I probably would give these a miss for my own build. Apart from that, we've got the usual installation guides, I take it. Multilingual installation guide. The usual manual with DVD drivers. Yep, naturally. I take it that the rest of the kit is probably underneath this cardboard divider, so let's get it out of the way and add voila. Okay, what do we have here? We've got cable ties with the AORS branding. We've got the Wi-Fi antenna as well. Pretty chunky kit of, piece of kit, I guess. And uh, we've got a bunch of, let's see. Okay, so these are your typical M2 screws. Oh, they've even included Thumb screws as well, that's a pretty nice touch. And uh, we've also got a Gigabyte G connector. Ah, I know what this is. So basically it's like a device that basically simplifies the way you would install your power LED connectors, your hard disk connectors and the like. Uh, it really makes life easier. So I think this is a pretty nice touch. It basically aggregates all of it into this plastic device here and makes installation a jiffy. Pretty nice. Apart from that, we've got Ah yes, these are RGB LED extension cables, I take it. Yep, nice to have. A whole bunch of SATA cables naturally. Oh yes, these are 
what Gigabyte term as thermistor cables. Apparently it allows you to monitor the temperatures of devices of your choice. So what you need to do is just, I guess, attach these leads to your device, like maybe a heatsink of some sort, and then you'll be able to monitor the temperature accordingly via the Gigabyte app. That's a nice to have. Um, ah yes, this appears to be a microphone of sorts that you need to use in conjunction with the noise detection capabilities that this motherboard comes with. Apparently it's for you to monitor well, I mean, the volumes inside your computer case. I guess in the event if you have a fan failure of sorts, you'll be able to detect it, I guess, by the volume that's produced inside of the chassis. I'm not entirely sure how useful this will be, but nice to have, I suppose. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. That's the SATA cable as well. So yeah, I think all in all, we've got a pretty nice set of accessories here to include with the board. And I must say, at this price point, I probably wasn't expecting any less. The X570M Pro 4 by ASRock on the other hand, which I did an unboxing video for by the way, so do check it out if you haven't already done so. It's so bare bones as compared to what we have here. Alright, with that, let's move on to take a closer look at the board itself. Here it is, the 1.5kg Aorus Master in the flesh. First impressions, there's quite a bit of metal on the board alright. Starting here, we've got a chunky heatsink for the VRMs, which also has RGB LEDs too by the way, I believe they'll light up this section here. The triple M2 slots have their own dedicated heatsinks too. And even this section here, where there's some sort of shrouding which covers the audio chips I believe, even this section here will light up with RGB LEDs too, no less. Moving over here, we've got the active cooling solution for the X570 chipset which can run pretty hot at times, so that's always a good to have for sure. Starting at the top here, we get your usual fan headers as well as RGB headers. Gigabytes kindly included a physical power and reset button right here, so that's going to be pretty useful in certain scenarios. They've also included a debugging LED right here, which will prove useful especially when you're trying to troubleshoot your build for issues. Now if we move on to the DDR4 slots, you'll notice that Gigabyte has included what they term ultra durable memory armor for the slots, which apparently reinforces them and prevents the PCB from warping. They've also applied the same stainless steel treatment to the PCIe 4.0 x16 slots right here as well, which is a good thing, especially considering that this is a gaming motherboard after all, and chances are you're going to be installing some pretty heavy graphics equipment on your board, so having that's always a good thing for sure. Looking at the lower half of the motherboard, if we look right here, we've got a front USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C connector right there, which is great for PC cases that include a front Type-C port. If we look to the side right here, you'll notice that we have 6 SATA 3 ports, and if we go on to the bottom right here, we get your usual array of front panel audio connectors, front power switch, reset, LED connectors, USB 3.0 headers and the like, so it's pretty standard. Now if we take a look at this general region here, you'll notice that this is where Gigabyte has located the integrated Realtek ALC1220 audio that is paired with an ESS Sabre 9118 DAC chip, and both of them are located underneath this shroud here. They've also taken the liberty to include better audio capacitors as well. So these right here are Nichicon Fine Golds and these red capacitors that you see here, these are German Wima parts. Now I guess serious audiophiles may still scoff at this inclusion of a DAC chip with the board and wind up using their own, but hey, I still say that this is a nice to have for sure. Now in the Ethernet department, if we look over at this chip right here, you'll notice that the AORS Master comes with an Intel i2-11AT supporting standard Gigabit Ethernet and it has another Ethernet port that's also powered by Realtek's RTL8125AG which supports, by the way, the latest 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet standard and is located beneath this chunk of heatsink and obscuring it from view. If we were to flip the board over to the other side, you're going to find out the reason why this board is just so heavy. And this is the reason why. 
Gigabyte's chosen to include an integrated base plate for the back of the motherboard and sure, it's going to offer perhaps some additional rigidity for the board and perhaps even dissipate heat a little bit better but it's definitely going to add some additional heft to your overall build which I'm not entirely sure is absolutely necessary. Moving over to the I.O. ports, I like the fact that Gigabyte has chosen to go with an integrated I.O. shield design which looks very good. Starting over here, we've got a clear CMOS button, a Q-Flash button that allows you to update the BIOS without installing a CPU or RAM, Wi-Fi and 10A outputs, 4 USB 2.0 ports, 2 USB 3.0 ports, 3 USB 3.1 Type-A ports, a single USB 3.1 Type-C port right there, your dual Ethernet ports, as well as gold-plated audio connectors with a digital audio out port right here. So there you have it, an unboxing and quick overview of the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. It packs a feature-rich list that I would expect from a high-end motherboard and is sure to be a valuable component in your high-end PC build, especially if you're gunning for a processor from the Ryzen 5000 lineup. Through this video, it's evident that there are X570 boards and X570 boards, with this being the latter and the X570M Pro 4 by ASRock that I reviewed previously being the former. It goes to show really that when you're looking for boards featuring a high-end chipset, you've still got to contend with a large variety of boards with different specifications and levels of kit. With that, thanks so much for watching, do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you guys around the next time.